How's this for an idea? Build a demagnetizer into a cassette shell. When you put it into your tape deck and hit play, it improves the sound quality of your music system. This was given to me last year. It's a TDK HD01, and I've been learning all about how it works. This was $22 when TDK released these in 1978. That's about a hundred bucks today. From what I've read, these operate by generating a sine wave, then slowly reducing the strength of that sine wave down to zero to remove magnetic buildup from tape heads. Cassette decks such as this Walkman have a play and recording magnetic tape head. Tape heads are basically small coils of wire. As the tape moves past the head, variations of magnetism on the tape cause a fluctuating magnetic field on the head. That changing magnetic field generates an electrical signal across the coil in the head. Amp up that electrical signal and you get some banging tunes to listen to. The problem is, over time, all this exposure to magnetic fields can leave a residual magnetic field on the head itself. This introduces distortion in music that can be heard as decreased high frequency crispy sound and more hiss and noise. When a demagnetizer is used with a tape head, the signal from the demagnetizer can smooth out any magnetic fields that have built up over time. On the back, this one says turn down the volume to zero because this signal can damage audio equipment such as speakers, headphones or ears. The other thing I learned is that there's been a debate going on for decades about how effective these things actually are. This debate has continued online with some great arguments on both sides in places like the Tapeheads forum and the Cassette Culture subreddit. The topic of demagnetization is complicated. There are other types of demagnetizers, such as this one base unit that can demagnetize not just the head, but the entire tape path. There is a solid use case for professional settings where equipment maintenance is arguably more critical. The question remains, what are the benefits of spending the equivalent of $100 on one of these? When a tape head pushes into the bottom of the cassette, there's a switch inside that activates the unit and a red light comes on. It's amazing the battery still works in this after all these decades. There's not many things from the late 70s that are still working with their original batteries. In fact, the only other thing that I can think of is the Voyager space probes. To test this, I'm going to use this CD tape adapter. This has a head in it. These are normally used to feed audio from a CD Walkman into a car tape deck. For this test, I'm going to use this adapter to feed the demagnetizer into a computer and record the signal. I need to take the adapter apart to get the head out for this to work. To record the signal, I'm plugging the adapter into the mic input in this laptop. Then I'm running Audacity to grab the actual signal. It's just a matter of pushing the head into the demagnetizer to activate the process. The signal's very short. Zooming into the waveform shows it's only about 120 milliseconds long. From a human time scale, it's more like a pulse. The signal fades out over time, so the end point depends on where you decide the zero point is. When zooming in further, we can see the sine wave. Measuring the wave reveals that there are 10 cycles every 17 milliseconds. 
With a bit of calculation, this comes out to about 588 cycles per second, or a 588 hertz sine wave. Having a closer look inside at the circuit board reveals eight transistors, we have the smattering of capacitors and resistors, a couple of diodes, and even a coil. It's a neat design, but probably the best part is the clear cassette shell. It just looks so cool. Looking at various different models from different manufacturers, it looks like one of the most common features of cassette-based demagnetizers is the clear or windowed shell designs that were used. I think that's the key. These were bought because they looked cool. Sure, they do operate on a sound principle that gives you a feeling that they're doing something, and it's clear that maybe in some cases, with some decks, at some points in time, they actually did make music sound better. But I think their main function was to look good sitting with your hi-fi system.